Alright, this one's for Novox 7 on the subject of rotary compressors for air. Uh, you basically hit the nail on the head when you said the uh, outer housing is your high pressure discharge and that is one of the reasons why it's running so hot. I know I've written a few replies for you but I just got to do a bit of a video since I'm on a roll. Um, yeah, basically what they rely on for cooling is gases from the evaporator coil coming back down into the rotor being cold. Cold gases coming in from the evaporator coil and the air temperature that you're pumping into it or sucking into it is not going to be anywhere near that. So naturally it's going to have a bit more of a temperature rise. Uh, the other thing, my, my theory on this, I don't know exactly how these compressors work. I'd, basically I just scrap them so I haven't really gone into it too much, although I will soon. Uh, my theory about the clattering noise you're hearing and the reason why it doesn't build so much volume until you create back pressure is that this little seal, I'm, I'm calling it an apex seal, just like the apex seals on a Wankel engine rotary or rotor. Uh, this is the rotor from one of the compressors, it's just a ring that sits on the eccentric and wobbles around inside the housing. And my theory is that this seal is just bouncing like so until it gets a bit of back gas back pressure behind it and that starts to make it more reluctant to actually bounce and just hold it in place as the rotor pushes it in and out and compresses the gas down into its passage. Um, that's just a theory at the moment, I don't know for sure, although it seems to be the case. You're obviously getting it to work with a bit of back pressure in it and no doubt the seal quality, the quality of the seal between the rotor and the apex will improve as you create even more back pressure in that canister. Which also leads me to believe with such a high speed compressor motion and such a small chamber you may well in fact create 300 even close to 400 psi which is pretty scary stuff when you're only dealing with plastic and copper airline which I don't even think copper's rated for much more than 350. Um, you're the braising expert so maybe you can tell me I don't I don't know exactly what these copper lines are rated for in, as far as burst pressure is concerned and that would be the worst case if the solder joint lets go and or take your head off, then there'll be no more good videos to watch, so you've got to be careful with the high pressure stuff. Uh, the other thing was uh, dieseling. Um, I know you're probably familiar with the principle of the diesel engine, and it's simply pressure and heat energy detonating the fuel and air mixture, and that's exactly what can happen inside the scroll compressors. Is as it's contracted through the scroll, there's so much heat and pressure build up that the fuel and the oil vapour and any trapped air in the system can just go bang and shatter the, the um, fins off the scroll. I don't know if these ones have the potential to do it, although they'd run hot enough and hard enough that I imagine they could. I don't know if it could kill it, they're so robust. I imagine you just get a bit of a pop and a thunk every now and then and that's it. But on the off chance that it does do a bit of damage, it may just crush the spring on your apex seal or jam it back and the compressor stops pumping. But that would be another little thing. I might set up a little diesel mister or something and just deliberately pump some down its intake to see if I can make it go pop. Get a bit of a bang out of one for once. Well, this is basically the same size rotary compressor as you have in your dehumidifier. This is just a little window unit air conditioner I had in my bedroom in summertime. It's actually got the, very, the smallest rotary compressor I've ever seen in person. I'm surprised they put such a small compressor in a window unit. But basically, you hit the nail on the head with your design layout. This is the high pressure side. This is the pressure tank. And this is your suction line through this accumulator, which basically just has a tube projecting up to about there. And any liquid that comes in accumulates down here and evaporates and goes down the tube rather than just dropping liquid straight into the rotor and slugging it. Uh, your oil sump's just down here and although you do get a little bit of spray out through the bearings in the top it shouldn't reach the top of the canister here which is your discharge this can also be used as a metering or gauging point um, I'm not going to tear this one apart and demonstrate with it, it still works ok but I'm picking up a few more air conditioners in the next week so I'm going to do some long term running tests maybe even squirt a bit of diesel mist down it and see if it will detonate
That'd be an interesting concept, a dieseling air compressor. I know this thing looks like a pile of shit because it's been in my graveyard for the last week, but this is a uh, big Panasonic rotary that I've cut the motor off for scrap. And basically, that's your sump down the bottom there. You've got discharge pressure all around the stator and up in the top. That's one of the reasons why they run so hot. You've got high pressure discharge gas coming through. And that's your little seal. I believe if there isn't enough back pressure, if there isn't enough back pressure that seal will bounce and obviously you don't get the volume which you experience with your water bottle test. And I could see that quite clearly actually. That was a great demonstration of the volume. I should have actually done that for my mini compressor test. But I like to use other things like tire tubes and shit for that. I might actually cut this one out and tear it apart just for the hell of it. It's pretty, a lot bigger than one of the other ones I did. It doesn't seem to want to go that way. Although, common sense would say that it would go clockwise, but it just it seems to be spitting out the uh, suction line, so I'm guessing it has to go counterclockwise. I don't know, I might spin it up with a power drill and see what it does. But that's for uh, this weekend, I'm going to be pretty flat out this week, so stay tuned. Another thing to note is on some of the bigger air conditioners, these compressors are even wrapped in a cloth blanket to keep them hot. Uh, excess cooling, I imagine, particularly in Arctic climates and North American winters, I imagine they could freeze up when